Welcome to the NDT Systems Bond Tester Setup video. We will be setting up the Bondoscope 3100 for use in three different bond testing methods. These are Resonance, Pitch Catch, and MIA. Let's go ahead and start with Resonance. The Resonance method is typically used to inspect bonds between laminates or metal sheets. Here we have a bonded aluminum sample which we'll be using to set up our gauge. First, take your probe. This is a 250 kilohertz probe, the L3250. We're going to connect that to our cable. Go ahead and connect your cable to the gauge. Notice that probe information has popped up. NDT Systems branded probes have auto probe recognition. If you're using a probe that's not from NDT Systems, you can still select a relevant profile to fit your application. We're just going to use Auto Probe for now. Go to Default Settings. We're going to set this up from scratch. Here is the Waveform Balancing screen. The probe is trying to find a null point to use to reference every in uh, measurement we take. Let's just go ahead and use air as the null point. Push enter. Here we have the flying dot screen. It's a polar coordinate screen with a amplitude or magnitude away from the origin and a phase angle. As we touch the probe to various parts of the sample, we'll get different phase and angle changes and amplitude changes as well. We're going to calibrate on this screen, but for now, let's look at the RF waveform, which is also available. Increasing the gain, we can see that there is a waveform. And as we change the position of the probe on the part, we get changes in amplitude, and we get changes in phase as well. Additionally, there is a probe cross-section, or cross-section of the waveform. This will also change as we change from different portions of the sample. And finally we also have the fourth view which is the swept frequency view. This will be familiar to those who use eddy current. But for this setup we're going to use the flying dot. Go ahead and couple your probe to a section of known good bonding on your sample and hit null. Notice the flying dot moves to the center. Anything that is read close to the center of the screen will be a good, uh, a good bond. Let's create a gate to represent this area. This is air coupled or if there is a section of the part we are scanning and we don't have enough coupling between the probe and the sample, we'll get a reading similar to this. To create a gate, go to dots and push enter. Go to store, push enter and the circular region will pop up around our flying dot. Notice that the alarm light has come on and that is because I have set the alarms to trigger when we have a region inside a gate. If I couple the probe to a known good section, the alarm goes away. Now let's couple the probe to a known bad section. You'll notice a significant amplitude and phase change. Let's go ahead and create a gate over here. Go ahead and push store. Notice we have a second region with the number 2. This will represent all of our disk bonds. I know we have one here. And we have one here. This is a known good section. This is a known good section over here. And if I scan too much and don't restore the couplet, I'll get a reading of air. Using these setups, we can go ahead and characterize the part if we were to inspect it. Let's move on to pitch catch. Typical applications of pitch catch probes are the inspection of core samples, specifically those with composite skins. Here we have a carbon composite skin over an aluminum core. We also have an induced crushed core and void region. 
and we also have some dimpling or porosity in the carbon skin. We can recognize pitch catch probes based on their transducer layout. One of them is a transmitter, which pitches the sound wave. The other catches it, which is the receiver. Let's go ahead and set this up for the carbon composite core sample. Step one is plug in the probe to the cable, then the cable into the gauge. Once again, we'll use the auto probe recognition and select defaults. Go to the sweep menu by pushing the sweep button. Hit enter on the balance selection. Place your probe on a bad section of your sample. In this case, it's the void. And then we'll place it on a good section. Hit the RF dots button until you come to the flying dot display. Go ahead and find a section of good sample and push null. And find your section of void or crushed core. And let's go ahead and put a gate there. Hit dots, store. Now anything in this area will be considered part of the void. We can scan the rest of the part to find other discontinuities, namely the dimpling in the center. We can put a gate here too. And we can reduce the size of this gate so it doesn't interfere with the null point. Unlike resonance probes, there is no need to put a couplet in between the probe and the sample. So we don't need to calibrate for air for couplet starvation. Let's look at a good section again, close to null, a void up in the second quadrant, and porosity down in the first quadrant. Let's go ahead and set up the MIA probe. The final technique we will cover is MIA probe inspection. MIA stands for Mechanical Impedance Analysis. The difference between this and resonance and pitch catch probes are that the MIA actually vibrates the material it's measuring as opposed to sending in a sound wave and listening for the return sound wave. These types of probes are specifically used on core samples, but more specifically on metal skin core samples and very small core width core samples. The reason for this is that the probe face only has one point of contact rather than two. This allows higher resolution and better point concentration. Let's go ahead and set up this probe for use on our sample. Again, we'll connect the probe to its cable. Connect the cable to the gauge. Use the auto probe function and select default settings. Go to the RF dot screen. Go ahead and couple the probe to a known good section on your part. Push null and then move to a known bad section. There's a delamination here at the top. We'll put a gate here to represent delaminations. Go to dots, push enter. Go to store. And there we have it. Next, let's look at some voids. There's a void around here. We can increase the gain to improve resolution. There's another void here, and we can verify our gate by finding it.
So here we have voids and a delamination. We can characterize the rest of this sample using these two gates that we've produced. Those are the main aspects of the Bondoscope 3100. If you have any questions or would like more information on it, please contact us through our website, ndtsystems.com. Thank you.